More than 20 million Americans suffer from noise-induced hearing loss, and those numbers are going up. Those afflicted range from troops returning home from war to teenagers blasting the latest tunes through their headphones. I first started recognizing that I had a hearing loss uh, probably uh, at somewhere along the middle to the end of my time in the Marine Corps. Noise-induced hearing loss is uh, damage actually to the inner ear hair cells that occurs from acoustic trauma. So if a sound is too loud and it is constantly presented to the ear, it eventually damage nerve, damages the nerve cells. In those days, we didn't wear any kind of hearing protection. So we just sort of got on the firing line, learned how to shoot our guns, and we shot them over and over and over again. And uh, I guess that was bad for my ears. It's really exposure after exposure after exposure. I just noticed that when we would go march, I couldn't understand what they were saying. And when you march, they really don't make it very clear. They don't say, by the right flank, march. They get some guy with some southern accent. Noise-induced hearing loss generally creates high-frequency loss in almost all cases. And the, uh, the upshot of that is difficulty understanding words. It's a matter of word clarity. They can hear the sound, but they don't understand. I think the future looks better uh, when you start to think about all hearing loss in general, because not only are we looking at how to try to solve or reduce noise-induced hearing loss and the effects within the inner ear itself in the nerve cells, we're actually looking at what we can do in the future to regenerate those cells. Recent figures show that a third of soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan can't be redeployed because of hearing impairments. When you think health, think IRU.